True fecal incontinence can be a socially and psychologically devastating problem for many patients. Fortunately, in most instances, patients actually have pseudo-incontinence, that is, just seepage secondary to poor stool consistency and minor issues around the anus. Patients with pseudo-incontinence, that is seepage, usually have mild soiling of their underwear. They can usually control flatus when necessary, and they may complain of prolapsing tissue from the anus. On exam, the anus appears normal, the resting tone is normal, and they have a good voluntary squeeze when they're examined. These will be the findings in almost all men, but only some women, complaining of incontinence. The initial treatment of patients with pseudo-incontinence includes increased dietary fiber and Metamucil to improve stool consistency. I advise patients to minimize time sitting on the toilet as well. That means no reading or texting. And sometimes Kegel exercises will also help. These suggestions will solve the problem in almost all instances of pseudo-incontinence. Occasionally a small procedure to remove a prolapsing hemorrhoid also needs to be done. True fecal incontinence, on the other hand, is due to one of three causes. First, a sphincter injury, usually secondary to obstetrical trauma. Second, nerve damage. And third, a combination of both a sphincter injury and nerve damage. It is much more common in women than men. True fecal incontinence usually involves a history of obstetrical trauma or rectal prolapse. Patients will frequently have fecal urgency, need to wear a pad or a diaper, and express a fear of going out for social activities. When you examine such patients, they may have a patulous anus, decreased resting sphincter tone, and a poor voluntary squeeze. Initial treatment should include Metamucil, Kegel exercises, pelvic floor physiotherapy, occasional constipating agents, and occasional enemas to clear the rectum. Patients with obvious deformities secondary to obstetrical trauma or the like should be referred to a specialist for consideration of surgical repair.